I'm doing a 60 minute session for a client. This is a follow up session. So I'll put links in the description to the previous sessions if you're interested. Um, so this client's name is Jennifer. She's open to sharing her name. I'm going to read these goals here. Some of the goals are actually um, giving me some feedback and all of us some feedback on how she's been since the, her last session, which was in September of last year. So I'm going to read it and, and then I'm going to get started, okay? All right, it says, Dear Abby, and I'm going to try and read this really fluidly and perfectly without screwing up <laughs> because when you read things out loud you'd be amazed how many times you're like am i on the same sentence <laughs> am I? okay so i'm going to do it all right okay here we go so jennifer says dear abby i'm so thrilled to reconnect with you after our second session chakra body transformation clearing old energy programs completed on september 30th of 2019 I can't believe this much time has already passed since then. It doesn't feel like it's been that long. I actively work on myself and my spiritual journey. When I work with you, it's like you connect with all the work I'm doing myself. And you help me to deepen it and expand it throughout my entire being. Almost like you're a living crystal amplifying the work I'm doing inside myself. It's beautiful. I love it and I'm so grateful for the work you've done for me and the work you do for so many others. We're truly transforming this world with your beautiful love and light work. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for saying that. That really means a lot to me. Okay, you say, Our last session triggered massive shifts in every area of my life, and I guess it's taken this long to fully process and assimilate them and to be ready for the next step in our work together. And before I get into that, I'd like to share my response to our last session. You immediately connected with two important elements of my journey to that point. The belief, feeling, and experience of me being separate from what I want. And that life is hard and getting what I want is hard work for me. As a result of that programming, working hard had been a huge pervasive theme throughout every area of my life. I had already recognized this myself. In fact, five years ago, I completely stepped off the difficult path I was on. For two years after that, I experienced an almost constant dark night of the soul state because although I knew this was the right thing for me to do, it was in conflict with all my old beliefs and patterns and a part of me kept trying to put my life back together the old way. While this other part of me wasn't having it, I kept sinking deeper and deeper and my life got darker and darker. I'm pretty sure part of me checked out at that point because when I started coming out of it, it's like I came back to myself suddenly. I could see myself in the light again. That's about the time I discovered you and your work. You helped me even before you started doing direct energy work on me. Even after that dark period, I started working on releasing the energy of those false work hard structures and many others. And also, just a side note, I have that same thing. Um, and I was raised with hard working people. So when you work hard, then you reap a lot of reward. But <laughs> you have to still work really hard, you know. Um, that's a good thing, right? But it can kind of... <sighs> what is your identity in the process of, of being a worker now all the time in everything you do? There's also the concept of work smart, not hard. Um, so there's ways of achieving great things without putting yourself through the grinder, you know what I mean? It's such an achievement when you find a balance with wor with working and achieving without draining yourself, destroying yourself in the process. And I think that is an old pattern in our collective, just in general. I mean, I think a lot of um, our parents and their parents coming from, you know, the beginning of the industrial, like coming from the industrial age, like the, the 1900s, it's all about you know, building building the structures, um, big plants, 12 hours, f seven days a week, you know, sewing and building things and, you know, wars that had gone on and all the, the, all of us working together to support that process, but then coming back from the war and now we're having to build, build the world. I don't know why, but me talking about this is like kind of draining for some reason. All right. 
So I said as best as I can say my thoughts about that on the side. <laughs> All right, here we go. So you say, in this session, you divided right into those energetic challenges and patterns to help me. <laughs> Yay, go team. You were also spot on when you connected with some childhood sexual abuse wounds that had still been affecting me on a deep level. Thank you. Abby, you so did your thing. Great job. I love having these experiences with you for me and through watching the work you do for others. It's like a great satisfying movie where you laugh, you cry, you heal, and you come to a greater, more evolved experience of yourself afterward. It's so lovely. Plus, I've been experiencing the benefits of our success. <laughs> LOL. I'm, I'm not working hard at all anymore. It's so awesome. I'm just doing what I really want to do easily and with very little effort on my part and freaking enjoying the hell out of everything. I'm beginning to live the life I always wanted to live, but didn't know was possible. Heart to heart, soul to soul, thank you. My goals for our third session are, I would like to continue moving forward in our work together. I'm ready now for us to go to the deepest, darkest, ugliest, and most beautiful wounds I have and face them. I sense there's some really dark challenges to face, and I don't know how my deeper consciousness will react to doing this, but here on the surface, I'm beyond ready. Let's go for it. Suit up. I want to go as deep as we can go to resolve and heal any old wounds, patterns, past life experiences, or energetic structures we find that may still be getting in the way of me enjoying my best life as my best self. As before, please feel free to share the work you do for me on YouTube to use my first name and to use any part of this message you find helpful. <sighs> okay, thank you for everything you shared, Jennifer. I really enjoyed reading it. I really enjoyed catching up with your story and how you've been. It just makes it so personable for all of us to get a more of a connected feel with you too. And those of you, those who don't know you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and relax here and let's see what, what we come across, okay? All right. Hmm. It's hard to really describe just yet. It's multi-dimensional message. You could say I'm walking into a very confusing place. And there's a head that's a sphere. A perfect sphere. But it represents a head. And it's on the ceiling. And it's not facing me. And the air of this place is like an amber color into kind of a smoky gray. And I feel like, um, how do I want to describe it? Uh, it reminds me of a movie. It's like a business building underground. And it's open in the center almost like a hive underground. So it kind of has a shape that is, uh, you could say triangular, but it's an upside down triangle. So when you walk to the railing um, at the top part, you could say you're at a wider part and you're looking down and you can see all the way down, like floor after floor after floor after floor after floor. Resident Evil. <laughs> it has a weird Resident Evil vibe to it. Almost like it's a secret science station underground where there's weird experiments going on. But it's all in this amber energy and the smoke. So, and it's not necessarily smoke, it's just air that is the color gray. And this weird head on the ceiling that doesn't want to look at me. And it's a bit muted. So when you walk in, it's like you don't, you can't conceive of sound at all almost like a bomb blew up in your ears and you can't hear literally anything you can see people's mouths moving and they're definitely talking to you but you have no idea what they're saying the energy is like this in here as well
it is it is a representation of what is anger okay but it's silenced anger it's silenced chaos it's the calm before the storm but the storm has already happened it's the end result of a nightmare Although in this state, with it being numb and I can't hear anything, it's as if nothing is going on. Alright, this is going to get a little bit more disturbing, okay? It doesn't necessarily represent any specific chakra, although there's heart energy in the center of all of this. Um, it's a bit ripped and uh, spread apart. It's like um, a soul that's been scraped across toast like butter. Um, it's like a ripped soul. And I see uh, what is like a Jesus figure that is just a skin. And the skin is spread out apart. And it's hanging in the center of this underground secret science layer. And it's literally like if you were to peel off the skin of Jesus and then spread it out, it looks like this and it's bloody and it's it's got some teeth in it. Also has to do with your sacral chakra. And it has to do with your heart, and it's silenced anger, okay? A lot of your chakras are starting to, to give a little bit of a shuffle, as though, yes, I'm a part of this too. Like, this means something to me as well. So your throat is the next one. Your third eye does not want to look at it. It doesn't want to look at it, doesn't want to talk about it, but the throat is saying, yes, I recognize this. I That the third eye is not going to look at it, doesn't want to look at it. And when I tell you that the chakras, I'm asking, so what chakras are familiar with this scene? Um, so I can support you in the process of healing. And they aren't, they're shuffling. They're not like, it's me! It's totally me! It's like, uh, like standing in the corner, like, yes, yeah, me. I kind of know about it. <laughs> not really wanting to talk about it, though. But it's just like a little bit of a hand raise and shy about it kind of thing this isn't something i can just bam like we'll just wrap this up and throw it in the sun we actually have to understand it it so once it becomes understood within itself then it's understood within yourselves your inner selves your chakras your etheric body your physical body your soul um, all, all of you, your subconscious, it'll all understand it. So then it doesn't need to work with that energy anymore. So right now it's just exposed, but it doesn't, it doesn't know how to talk about it. It doesn't know how to, it's basically just this right now. But we're going to have to work through it. Not just pu push the dirt under the rug and then, or just like toss it in the sun. Okay, it's done. <laughs> we're going to work through this. And the thing is that the more I talk about we're going to work through this, the more there, there's a, a very not right energy. And I'm walking on in and I'm like, we're going to work through it. All of the levels of this, we'll work through it. It's going to be okay. <laughs> the skin of Jesus that's like the tyranny energy that's silenced in here. It's like, I'm like coming in like with really bright spirit. And it's all just like hiding. Like it doesn't want to just ra even raise its hand about it. All right. So when I come in, I'm stepping in. The, the energy gets pretty disturbed. Um, it doesn't want to heal. It doesn't want positive energy. So it's pretty disturbing, okay? Um, but it it's actually, you know, in Resident Evil, they have that part where she's kind of in a, um, like a tube or a hallway that's made out of like glass. But then there's all these laser beams that will just basically cut you into pieces and that's the end of you. So this is just the air itself becomes complete technological air. There's no holes in between it. It's complete one technological air and it's it's meant to just um, incinerate like, um, 
I just, it just dissolves me. It dissolves my existence. Instantaneously, I am dissolved. But it, it doesn't understand why I'm not dissolving. And it's trying to hurt me. Like, it's trying to cut my... Like, it's trying to take my skin off as well. Like, it's trying really hard to get me to va vaporize or vanish. Which is good because it's it's already is exposing itself. Because it its consciousness is what is doing this. Its own consciousness, its own existence is what is, is doing this. So it's very easy and a very exposed now. It's not hiding from me. Okay. So this energy is pulling itself into a nucleus in the center. And it's becoming kind of like a tornado. And again, it's like a beehive-shaped underground secret science-y place, okay? Now, when I look into this tornado, it shows me a really terrible catastrophe of human bodies, human life. And where the human life doesn't, it's like, no, just get rid of the human life. We need to just get rid of the human life. Again, a Resident Evil type of vibe to it where... They literally are turning all the humans into zombies. They literally are releasing a, a, a virus, so to speak. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't putting two and two together, that coronavirus or anything, but um, it's got a vibe that there's like masterminds that are creating a, a secret thing that if, if you're in the hive, you're safe, but if you're on the land, you're going to get the virus and then you're going to be transformed. So I'm looking into the nucleus of the tornado and it shows me body upon body upon body upon body upon body upon... I mean, it's like the Holocaust when you see all the, the Jewish people, just all their bodies from the concentration camp, just, just mass graves and stuff. It makes me feel so sad. See, we're finally starting to... It's not... It's silenced anger. This has to feel emotion. I like neutral because then I don't have to feel anything. But this has to be felt. I mean, this is serious stuff here. This is serious energy here. So it's if, if it's just a picture in a book, it's like that's one thing. But you become the skin that's being stretched apart hanging there. That's a that's terror. That's that's very, very bad. And I have to get this to feel. I have to get this to feel. It's hard for me to understand the the image still I'm still looking into it I see let's say a family and they're all naked stripped and dead and their bodies are just piled on top of each other so mom and a dad and particularly a little girl it feels like there's a couple of kids but I just see the little girl in particular she still has her hair in a ponytail with a um like a little white bow in the back it's almost like they were dressed for church, but then they were just stripped of their clothes and then thrown in this mass grave, but they're already dead. They have perfect bodies, like untouched bodies. I mean, they're almost like made out of porcelain, but you can see the disturbingness of it that they died somehow on the inside. Even though they don't look, that there's nothing disturbing on the outside of their appearance. They look like just regular people thrown naked into a big pile and I hear you say you'll never be able to bring them back to life you can't raise them from the dead they look perfectly alive but they're dead you say this over and over again they're all dead they're all dead they say that's okay it's actually okay That is the experience that they needed to have as souls. And their human mind is going to look at that and see the wrong in it all. But the higher self, the source energy, is pure love. It understands the hardship. The human mind will say that is wrong all day long. And if it is so wrong, then why does it exist? Why do wrong things exist? 
Why do terrible, wrong things exist? If God is okay with that, we're all a part of God. And we're a part of this society. We're looking at the bigger picture here, but the individual person? I mean, how many people are working on themselves? Every single day is the most important thing they could invest their time and energy into. Asking the questions. What is my real purpose in life? Am I following through with my heart's directions or am I just following through like a robot with the way society is directing me? Because I don't know what else to do. I mean, it's all part of life. There isn't really a right or wrong answer. It just looks wrong. You're really angry, um, but you it's silent anger, and I see you transform into the little girl, and you're wearing a cute dress, like a Sunday school dress or something, and you're, you're running um, down one of these hallways. It's like a, a long, it's a hallway that's also a balcony that goes around, and then you can go inside these rooms. It's like a hive. You can come and look, and you can look straight down and see all the floors. I tell you, I'm not going to chase you, so when you're ready, why don't you come back and talk to me about it? I need you to start being able to talk about this stuff. She says, I want... She becomes quite dark, okay? And she says, I want... I want it all to die or I all want I mean she says it in a power word that's like a scream and then everything shatters and vaporizes and doesn't exist anymore nothing exists because that was so wrong that nothing deserves to live period nothing deserves to live if we're okay with that then nothing deserves to live and she is the energy she is that a pure energy of vaporizing energy She's also like the system. So, you know, in Resident Evil, they have the little girl who's also the, the computer that runs the whole thing. She's running this whole thing. Okay, this is going to get pretty disturbing here. <sighs> we're gonna have more answers as to where is this coming from what what does this mean exactly um you know so right now it's still quite vague but we're working through it okay so she's going and hiding somewhere in this and um as through every single door around there's all this dark ghouls um like she just released some of these contained monsters that had been transformed by the virus and they're, they're monsters of chaos. They don't, they can't conceive of themselves as angelic. They can only be a monster. That's it. They only can be a monster. And they're made out of like black, like goopy tar and they're bulbous with very sharp, scary teeth and they're big monsters and they're coming through all the different doorways. It's just like uh, filling this whole place up, like uh, all their goo is spewing out and it's kind of going over the railing, like it's starting to fill in this place. I say, why are you wanting to destroy me? I actually want to heal this stuff. So you're not going to give me a right to try to make things better because you want everything to go away? Because something unfair happened to you? See, that's the problem right there. You're gonna have to forgive people. She, she whispers that it's too hard to forgive. It's too hard because... When it, she's showing me another scene, this is like another life where it, 
man that's just sort of completely directed to just destroy a village with other men it's like war you know coming into your little home and uh, with a big sharp bloody knife blood all over his skin and his face he stinks he hasn't bathed in who knows how long coming in and just killing your family right then and there not even caring it's just what, what how can i forgive somebody who just is just doing that how can i forgive i mean that's actually pretty uh neutral that's still believe it or not neutral on some of the things your soul has has seen before your eyes tear her done before your eyes She keeps it neutral because I tell, I'm turning the volume up and um, the pain is so loud that it will ne it will just vaporize everything. It's all unreconciled screams from many other lives, unreconciled terror that you witnessed in the process of being murdered. Or viciously wronged in the most disturbing way possible. So I'm telling her that neutral works because it helps us to take a look at things without feeling emotionally distraught. But eventually you're going to have to be emotionally distraught. Otherwise it's going to stay like this. So this is challenge because when I turn the volume up on the true sound of pain inside your soul's journey, um, it's so loud, it's vaporizing loud. So she comes out to try to vaporize then the, the pain, like she doesn't know how to heal it. So she needs to get rid of it or she needs to neutralize everything so there's no sound. That's the only way to keep it balanced or to keep it tolerable. Okay, so we're, this is a sacral chakra thing right now. It's really weird. It's orange and yellow, and it's got like little tentacles. It's like having a weird creature inside your uterus, and its little tentacles are out. It's, it's weird, okay? It's like a weird fish, a weird like um, water creature. It, it isn't easy to just... I mean, I'm going to have to figure this out. Hmm. Hmm. This is pretty disturbing, but it's reflecting of another life, too. Basically, it's kind of a torture event, but living things, like living things being forced, you are forced to consume living things, then those living things were going to grow inside of you until you died. And it's not like Aliens, a movie where it just comes out of your chest. It's like they start to eat your insides, but they don't come out of your chest. They're just living inside of you, having babies inside of you, eating you. And it, it, it's like it was existing in the water. Like you just drink it. You can't get it out. I mean, you know it. You know what's going to happen. Your body becomes food for the fishes. That's literally the line. Is some kind of aquatic thing, aquatic animal that's in water. I know there's the where you pee and then it goes up your pee into your, you know what? This is, you can drink it and it, it'll live in your body, like in your intestines, like uh, parasitic worms. But it seems worse than that. It seems worse than that. I don't know that that happened here on Earth. 
people think that Earth is the most chaotic planet. There's lots of planets that are exploring chaos, so this isn't the only one. This is really hard because it's 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 like um, there's a weird energy that I can feel in the back of my head, above my head, and it's um, moving. <laughs> it's like lots of moving worms. Yeah, that's what it's like. And it's pretty colors. I mean, it's like green and blue and orange, yellow, really dark blue into purple. It's just energy moving based on what we're talking about, based on what we're looking at. It's creating energetic movement and reactions here around the back of your head and slightly above it here too. And it's very uncomfortable. Hmm. This is another gross one. It's like, it's like kind of inconceivable. It's like an alien life that's just inconceivable to our mind, but it would be something like this, okay? It's it's like a worst it's a worst nightmare. It's kind of a conspiracy theory um theme. But it's taking you off of a planet and then you're put into some kind of pod with a bunch of others that are in their own separate pods. And you're kind of just, um, you're basically someone's pantry. So you're going to end up being eaten. But you have a, a consciousness that's like uh, able to think and feel like a human. It'd be like taking, um, you know, we know monkeys are a lot like people. And it'd be taking them away from their mom and dad and putting them in a, a pod and just leave them alone. Not able to touch any of the others that are here in their pod. And they're scared. They're confused. They're not understanding what's going on. And they will be taken and eaten. And some of them will be eaten while they're still alive. You have an experience like this. It feels alien to me. I don't know what kind of... I don't know if you were like humanoid or animal, but you had, you were able to think. You were able to have a family and understand love. You were able to um, raise kids like you were able to have. It feels kind of animal and humanoid in a way, but it feels very natural and beautiful. But it would have been perceived like a dolphin or, you know, until we figured out dolphins might actually be sentient beings, you know? <laughs> It's kind of like this. And you've had that happen a lot of times. You have known what it's like to be a sentient being that is basically food. Used as food, but it's not a um, humane um, way that they were consumed. It's freaking scary. It's so scary. It's really bad. It's pretty bad. It's still, you're still venting it right now. I mean, there's a lot of lives here. And some of them are like you were a child as well. I mean, they're really hard ones. Really wrong. There's something about you and... Let's let, let me let this... It's still processing here, but another thing just came to me. Hold on. Anger. Disrec unreconciled anger, like, um, you're kind of shouting that, um, they, it's like karma, they deserve to know what it's like, but they deserve it 10,000 times worse than it was like for me, because they shouldn't even thought of doing that in the first place. So if they even have the goal to even do that in the first place, then they deserve 
to it, it be done to them, but 10,000 times worse. Like, then it was, then I experienced it. So there's, like, this very loud voice of, like, karma that you are asking God, asking Source, that they get put through a messed up grinder, so they'll never do that again. You're saying that. Which is why we can't get out of this cycle, because everybody needs to be punished. But when are we just going to forgive each other? Because if we can't forgive each other, then that person deserves this. That person deserves that forever and ever 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 and ever. It needs to stop. So we have to choose forgiveness. We have to accept our fate. We have to forgive those souls. Okay, this, oh. There's still another thing that I'm gonna tell you, but I can't talk about it right now because the next thing's happening, it's pretty loud. It's almost, it's a weird creature. This has a, this is paralleling something that it, ha it exists or it did exist. It's like a really flappy, um, Something really flappy that grows on the head, it kind of flaps around. It can't, it's, I don't know if it has its own, like, muscular ability, like, it can, it, it's multiple parts, okay? You could even say squid legs, um, growing out, but they're different shapes, and they can, like, move in different directions, like, trying to pick up a signal, electric, like, um, information, like a satellite dish that's actually growing out of your own head. But it's kind of squishy at times, too. Like, it could be soft or it could be hard. And it's a man, and he's he's red in color, and he's very... He's got, like, a Jabba the Hutt type lower body. Like, he's a big worm. Oh, man, he's not... He's pretty scary. He's got, like thousand tiny tiny little extremely sharp razor blade teeth in his mouth I can't even believe how functional that is it's really painful but it's pretty quick when it's like if he were to bite you it is insanely painful for about five seconds and then you're dead <laughs> like you won't you're done after that because it's like he can s consume so quickly He's really likes blood. He's like a leech type. Um, he like, but he can consume flesh and bones. But he drinks it. He likes to drink his food. He's very slow moving. He's in this um, hive area. I'm going to be him for a moment. It's a male energy. Oh, weird. Like, I just kind of merge with his consciousness or whatever he is. And then he just kind of falls, it falls, it claps on the ground. Like, he instantly falls asleep. Oh, weird. Okay. So I'm inside his being and when he falls asleep he goes and he he's inside his own being right now as well and we're both looking at each other he's very menacing so we're having a conversation inside of his body he's pretty incredible species he's like a really incredible species you wouldn't want to come across him This, uh, they have psychic ability, they have, I mean, but they don't have love, that's for sure. 
One thing they're lacking here. And that's his greatest weakness. <coughs> he can't get rid of me and I'm like a parasite inside of him a psychic parasite he's trying to get rid of me and he can't figure out how the only reason why is because I'm not scared of him like uh, psychically I'm, I just accept him for the way he is and I admire the different aspects of who he is. Um, I also can understand what it would be like to run into him would be a pretty scary experience. But I'm just a projected consciousness and he's, he's now inside of himself. I'm not understanding where this is in time but you have a familiarity with this being. It doesn't feel as though that... It's almost like an echo of his memory, okay? And so in the echo, he still lives. He still exists. I'm learning more about him. He just really works with a lot of threatening ideas. He's um, kind of... He could put an idea into your head and you would you would be extremely influenced by it. You could even be in a lot of pain from it. That's only if you're connected to one of his receptors, like... But you have the power to say no to the image. And if you say no to the image, then you're saying no to him, and, and that's his gift. So there, you don't have to be... You don't have to be, you know, uh, vulnerable to him, I guess. He's still trying to hurt me, but I, I'm just waiting right now and showing him that it, it's okay to just let himself feel love, which is one thing he doesn't feel at all. So I'm just being patient. He's still, like, trying to create pain and suffering. I'm not going to give up on him. I could just put him in a box and throw him away, but I'm going to see if I can get him to to shift on the inside of himself. I'm going to go become so he his body is in a sleep state and he became his consciousness came inside of himself where I am. Now I'm going to go inside of that. Wow, so this soul, which isn't your own, um, it's really hard once you do this, but just a second. His soul's in, in, in a way imprisoned. It started exploring, I can feel the lineage of this. It's just, it started exploring lifetimes that are kind of like threatening, threatening of other species. Um, it's wanted to learn more about that consciousness or that stance in the totality, like God's personality that is that, okay? This part of God, the soul, wanted to understand that side of God, that side of himself then, the soul's self. Through living um, lives in forms that are very intimidating, um, very scary to other beings, and kind of became um, used to it for so long. Doesn't really have lives that it was innocent or um, soft and pleasant. It doesn't have many lives where it was simple and, and warm inside and full of love. Because the soul's been through so many lives like this, it can't remember where it started. It's like it's so, it has so many lives like this that it doesn't, 
have other lives to to help it understand other parts or other sides of itself so it's basically decided that it this is all that it is is this side of god is all that it is which isn't true it can diversify if it wants to again we can't force souls to diversify i mean that's that is that is god that is higher self right there I'm going to show him my lineage of lives. Oh, I guess I'm talking to him about how he knows you and he tells me that you brought him here so that you could torture him. But you never did do it. You never have hurt him. It's almost like you always want... You, you, there was some weird connection with this soul in particular. And you just couldn't do it. You wanted him to heal inside. If he, this terrible monster, could heal inside, it would prove something to you. It would prove that forgiveness is possible. Because your idea of forgiveness is, if I'm going to forgive that soul, then that soul has to still learn their lesson. Otherwise, they don't deserve my forgiveness. That's, what you, that's your belief system with forgiveness. I say that's still creating the rubber band scenario. That's still creating... <clears throat> It never is going to go away. You literally have to come to peace with everything. You kind of say, if I come to peace with everything, then how is anything going to change? Like, if I become at peace with this being, this red being, how is this red being ever going to change? Say, so your heart is, is, is calling you to control the direction of this being's learning in, in the incarnate form. Which means you want to support the soul's growth and learning about your style of growth and learning. So you feel a connection, the part of God that you are feels a connection with this part of God... And feel strongly that this part of God needs to diversify. So your heart is wanting to help this part of God learn more about your style. Where this part of God is wanting to help you learn more about his style. So whose style's right and whose style's wrong? They're both styles of God. But that's where the weird acceptance comes from. Understanding that it, it's... It's like we can control the play or we can see it as the play itself and to learn from our experiences. But continue to follow our heart because literally you can do anything. There's no right and no wrong. You say I still want him to go away. <laughs> It's weird. It's like, I don't, I want him to go away, but yet you can't let go of him. <laughs> Which really is you saying, I want him to become full of love. And until he becomes full of love, I will own him. I will control his destiny. Again, it's like, uh, okay, you can own him, I guess. <laughs> you can control him. You can become possessive of his learning. And what you feel is best for him to know. Isn't that kind of the way he is as well? Honestly, when if you go deep, deep, deep into this soul, he has a tiny little voice that wants to know an another way. Just because of all these lives can't seem to shift... Um, incarnations it's almost like he has all this energy going for him that it's hard to shift into a different direction it's like they were showing me 
he's born as a human child now is like rancid ter night terrors struggling like hard 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 lives life after life after life after life after life <laughs> extremely hard lives in order to balance uh, the opposing side of what he's been in so many lives it would be crushing it would be very hard It's almost like, at this point, I don't know what to say. Because it's like, they, there isn't really, they aren't really saying that it's appropriate for this soul to go the opposing side. And the soul isn't necessarily saying I'm ready for that yet either. So you can't force it upon the soul. However, you are going to have to let go of the soul and let the soul do whatever it wants. Because this silent, angry side of you has become very twisted. So you need to disconnect. So I am going to put him in a box now. And then I'm just going to hand him to Archangel Metatron. And then you need to let go of him. Basically, when you put a consciousness into an energy box like this, it disconnects all cords. It allows them to be completely in with themselves, all right, and out of your energy field, and you completely disconnect from them. So now Metatron can help guide this soul, this aspect of this soul, which is still in your energy field, um, can help guide it to wherever. I, Because I can't uh, conceive of it as a human. I just don't know. So, And I'm just going to let that happen. Because I'm just going to let him go. You have no idea how that being was actually manipulating you a lot. Because his energy was still there. And his energy alone comes with so many lifetimes of, of really disturbing things. So it's it's been in your energy field, so it's actually been energetically manipulating you. It's like holding a crystal in your hand and letting the energy heal you, but holding like um, complete bad luck or something in your hand and wanting to get something good out of it. <laughs> so now you just let let it go. Just let's let it be what it wants to be. It's completely silencing your energy field and you're actually, I mean, I can't believe how psychically like loud that thing was. You're, you're coming, like everything's getting quiet. There's no Resident Evil vibe. There's no virus that escaped. Um, the death of so many people vibe. The tyranny of so many lives. The skin of Jesus being stretched thin in the middle of this underground hive. Like it's all faded. It's uh, feeling so relaxed that this is some kind of secret torture place that you created in order to help you process all the pain that you've been through. And it's like pain you can't let go of, pain that you can't forgive. So this place was created so you could work through it. But the only way to really work through it is just to come to peace inside yourself and to let it go and oh hey you see how I had to work through this I couldn't just let all this stuff go because if I let all this stuff go you wouldn't have the the stamp of awareness inside your soul about what it means and why is it here and how did it create itself all that and now it's safe for all your chakras to be able to Breathe and be free. <sighs> Feel so much better. <laughs> it's almost like like laughter. <laughs> like it's like, whoa, what happened to me? 
I was some kind of vaporizing energy of chaos. It was like, that slug had a lot to do with that, too. That being, I'm telling you, is something really on, on another level. It could, like, it could mess up a whole galaxy. Like, it was something on another level. You feel so peaceful. You feel so clean. You feel so... Ah, balanced. So much better. You know what's interesting? There's an echo that's coming back to me. Because I don't feel like that race of beings exists anymore. It keeps echoing back that they something had happened to them. It was like the universe no longer needed that um, reflection of itself. So they died out somehow. I really don't feel that they're a part of our version of now. They just don't exist now. You feel like you're going to nap for a long time. There's no weird amber color or gray in the air. There's nothing hiding anymore. You just, it's like, I can pretty much let this go now. <sighs> you have so many lifetimes that you've, you've experienced so many different perspectives. <sighs> I'm still working on at literally just encompassing this whole energy space and just pure love and just breaking it apart and just helping to lift it up and out of your energy field and literally just take it into the sun. It's very healing, bright energy. Like energy that goes into the sun, it's surrounded by pure light and radiating love. It literally is. She, she can't, the girl, little girl is kind of still lingering like she wanted a proper burial and she was never given one. They say you can set yourself free from this life at any time and you don't need a proper burial. Some people say I just wanted someone to love me in my life. If only somebody could just love me. But nobody loves me. I'm so lonely. Now I'm going to end my life. If somebody could have just loved me, I wouldn't have had to do that. Life is like this. You're going to have to let some things go. You're going to have to go through the hard stuff. And hard stuff that's not fair. It's not right. It doesn't make any sense. It's wrong on so many levels. But you're going to have to forgive literally everyone and everything. As well as yourself. She says, but what about my parents? They say, what about all the other people? Trust that it was the perfect life and all of its suffering. She's saying it inside of herself. Trust that this was the perfect life, even in all of its suffering. And I see her, a weird, like, peel. Like, she peels from inside and drops the shell. And there's this pure spirit that comes out of her and smiles at me. It looks like liquid water light. I mean, it looks like, wa like liquid light. White light. And then it's just starting to go to heaven, is what it's like. And now that that's been set free, I can smell the stench of this place. It was holding on by that, by that unreconciled energy still. Oh man, feeling even better. There's something else that you're gonna have to to work on. It has to do with viruses. It's it's odd because this Resident Evil. I wasn't putting, making the parallel and suddenly it hit me. 
coronavirus, but it's almost like, I don't know if it was on Earth or somewhere else, you have some familiarity with viruses and what it feels like a manipulated event. And what what is your takeaway from the session about manipulated events? I'm not saying coronavirus is a manipulated event. I'm just saying something in your energy field is saying that you're familiar with manipulated events that even create viruses in order to wipe out whole races of beings. So now you can live on that planet or now you can whatever. Or you were the ones that, that died from it. You have an unreconciled anger in your heart about something like this. It is the most beautiful life you could have ever lived. You're going to have to find a way to say that. And everything about that life happened perfectly. Had to find the strength to say that. Because that's how we heal all these parts of God. That's how we heal ourselves or each other. That's how we bring ourselves back home. Like, how are you going to bring yourself back into heaven if you're holding on to all this stuff, that weird red being? Like, you can't hold on to this stuff. you got to let it go so you can come back to heaven. Otherwise, your soul is kind of, aspects of your soul are just suspended in these places, these torture places of suffering because you can't forgive. You can't forget that was wrong. You're going to make sure to teach that being um, a lesson, you know. So it's holding you back. <laughs> When you can just trust in the process, can trust in the process. Yeah, you, you a huge shift just happened in all your chakras. You feel like oh, holy. You feel like heavenly. You feel like you you are risen out of completely that weird place. You feel like I feel the part of you that forgave and let go. I saw it was the beautiful life, the little girl. I feel I'm a part of that liquid light that is going into heaven now. And I'm letting go of literally all of it. Unimaginable numbers of lives with really, really difficult things that you had to watch happen to others and to yourself. I'm helping you get all the way there. Shedding a layer about am I worthy? You're starting to doubt you were not a righteous, you weren't doing the righteous thing by holding on. You're starting to judge yourself about what you were doing. But I tell you to let that go. Again, you don't have to judge yourself. Do you think that red guy needs to judge himself forever? We ha we can't judge ourselves. Wow, you're almost just a thin little thread of white, pure white light. You just shed a lot of more layers that were holding you back from setting this part of yourself truly free. And now here you are. And you're just merging with pure light in a, it's just like pure light. I don't feel separation between this part of you and the love of all. I feel you are the love of all. What's so interesting is now you returning to the love of all. All of these lives are receiving nourishment and that nourishment is reaching all the souls that you've ever contacted you've ever interacted with through you the light within you is reaching all of them helping their souls to receive a new awareness because we're all a part of each other so to really get through to that red being you letting it all go and returning to God for instance and healing yourself is healing the red being. It's healing all of us. It's healing me as well. It gives us all something new. 
<sighs> That's it. That's all. That was amazing. <sighs> Jennifer, thank you so much for this. <sighs> You're going to feel so much lighter. <sighs> lighter in your soul. <laughs> lighter in every aspect of your life <laughs> all right thank you so much for this beautiful experience thank you for everything you shared <sighs> thank you for being a part of my life <laughs> and those of you watching if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com Thank you all so much for watching and have a beautiful day.